unless I'm missing something here, I think this is the single most aggressive, most offensive thing that Microsoft has done against the Linux community in a long, long time. Hey everybody, it's your friend and your guy and your favorite creator whose real first name is Gardner. Yes, it's my real first name. I know there's been some doubt about that in the comments. It is my real name. <laughs> it's on my driver's license. It's on every document I've had since birth. Real quick, if you wanna see these videos before they go live on YouTube, head over to library. There's a link in the description. It is an open source alternative to YouTube and I love it. There's this meme about uh, Microsoft. Uh, it, it comes from a letter that Bill Gates himself penned. Uh, Embrace, extend, extinguish. Embrace. Microsoft adopts a technology, usually an open standard, and developers who are using the technology begin to use Microsoft's offerings. Extend. Microsoft slowly begins to add proprietary features to the technology. Developers who are using Microsoft's tech adopt these proprietary features. Maybe these features resolve a pain point, or maybe they just make work marginally more convenient. Extinguish. As developers use more and more of Microsoft's proprietary tech, a gap begins to form between the pure implementation of the standard and Microsoft's proprietary one. Eventually, Microsoft's dominance and market share makes the once open standard now a proprietary one controlled by Microsoft. And they've done this countless times. I mean, does anyone remember ActiveX? Uh, it's the reason you still have to use Internet Explorer at your day job. Well, you don't believe me? Dang it. <laughs> And the only reason Microsoft wasn't able to completely extinguish uh, competing browsers was because Netscape sued the crap out of them and then the federal government stepped in and slapped them with an antitrust lawsuit. That's an example of good government, if you ask me. But there's this other open thing that Microsoft are trying to get their claws into. Uh, if you're watching this channel, you might have heard of it. It's this little thing called Linux. See, Microsoft has this clear and storied history of warring with Linux and open source in general. I mean, since time immemorial, Microsoft has uh, been afraid of hobbyists and enthusiasts and, and people who write their own code. They're like the proverbial elephant being afraid of a mouse. <laughs> so a lot of us were understandably skeptical when on a dime, there was suddenly all this love coming at us neckbeards from Redmond, Washington. And you know, I've maintained a healthy skepticism towards Microsoft, uh, for as long as I can remember. I mean, I remember when Steve Ballmer called us a cancer. I mean, it was one of the things that actually got me interested in Linux in the first place. But see, their acquisition of GitHub and NPM and countless other open source projects, I mean, their sponsorship of the Linux Foundation, their pushing of Azure in the cloud to virtualize Linux, it all has had me kind of nervous over the last couple of years. But I'm not some paranoid lunatic. Like, I'm really... I'm, I'm, a, I'm a trusting person. Like if someone comes to me and says, you know, I've had a real change of heart. I just, I think I should get a second chance. I'm the kind of guy who's willing to give people second chances. So I've been looking at all of these things and, and trying to, to, to interpret Microsoft's uh, motivations here uh, without bias, because God knows I have a lot of bias towards Microsoft. <laughs> So I've been looking at their actions recently and I've, I've been asking myself, is this something that is good for the community? Is this something that a company with good intentions would do? Or at least, at the very least, not evil intentions. And while I have made the embrace, extend, extinguish joke here many times over the last couple of years, it seems that a lot of people are actually willing to give Microsoft the benefit of the doubt, or at least say that they're not completely evil or dead set against open source. I mean, I have even, uh, to a certain extent, come to that conclusion. But then they go and do this. Like, I don't love Microsoft. I have no love for Microsoft. Except for Halo, of course. There's only like one product that I use from Microsoft and it's uh, an open source fork of VS Code. So I haven't talked much about Windows Subsystem for Linux on the channel. Firstly, because I hate the name. Windows Subsystem for Linux, to me, doesn't make sense. It should be Linux Subsystem for Windows, because you have a Linux, you have Linux, and it's a subsystem of Windows. So Linux Subsystem for Windows. But no, Windows has to come first, so it's Windows Subsystem for Linux. 
me and my pragmatic language disorder, uh, here's Windows subsystem for Linux, and I always think that that's what Wine should be described as. That, but whatever, that's not the point. <laughs> but the reason I don't talk about Windows subsystem for Linux or WSL from here on out is because uh, I don't like Windows and I don't use Windows except for playing VR. Windows is a trashy, outdated operating system. It's, it's ugly beyond belief and it holds absolutely no utility to me and my daily workflow. But Microsoft just announced that DirectX is coming to Linux, or well, Windows subsystem for Linux. That's right, here we go. Now, I would be okay with this if uh, GPU acceleration was coming to WSL through native Linux uh, graphics APIs, but that's not what's happening here. If Microsoft created some kind of wrapper or translation layer to convert OpenGL to DirectX, that wouldn't be ideal, but that would at least be better than what they're doing right now. I'd also be okay with this if Microsoft made DirectX open source and ported it over to Linux proper. But that's not what's happening here. This is only for Windows subsystem for Linux. If you're not running WSL, you don't have access to DirectX. So if you're a developer and you need access to hardware acceleration, if you anticipate that your end user is going to be running uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, you have to include DirectX. There is OpenGL support, we'll get to that in a second. But basically, if you use WSL, uh, DirectX, it's not going to work on bare metal uh, Linux. And I know that there are going to be people who are going to be like, but Gardner, you now can use OpenGL or OpenCL or whatever. Uh, it's going to be available in uh, WSL now. Yeah, whatever. The, the fact is, Microsoft is translating OpenGL calls into DirectX, which is the exact inverse of what <laughs> Wine does, translating DirectX to OpenGL. As a consequence, there's going to be overhead in doing this. So why isn't Microsoft directly exposing native Windows OpenGL to WSL? The answer to that question is simple. Microsoft wants people to be publishing uh, WSL specific applications that use their proprietary technology. Also, Microsoft is not providing Vulkan support here at all. Why is that? I can tell you why that is because Vulkan is the most popular graphics API right now and uh, it is a serious threat to DirectX 12. Because of all these factors, my animal brain detects a threat. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the hairs on the back of my neck are standing erect at this point. We're past embrace mode now. This is wanton extend. When will extinguish hit? I don't know. Maybe they will add Vulcan support down the line. Who, who knows at this point? But I can tell you one thing. It will be inexcusable if they translate Vulcan into DirectX. That's inexcusable at this point. If Microsoft really loved Linux, if they cared about the community, they would do what is right. They would open source DirectX. They would port it to Linux properly. They would drop all of the patents surrounding it. And they would expose native OpenGL and Vulkan to Windows subsystem for Linux. If they don't do that, I don't trust them. So yeah, I won't be using WSL anytime soon. I, I want to know what you think about it. Do you think my bias is showing? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you guys. I want to thank everybody over on Patreon, including NQBW. My dude, your support is truly appreciated. If you believe in the work that I do, you can help support this show over on Patreon with a monthly contribution. Every dollar helps. You guys are helping me get through this tough time, and uh, I can't express my deep gratitude enough for you guys. Thank you. That's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Hit that like button, hit that share button, follow and repost this content on library, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a blessed day.